What's up guys? Let's have a reality chat about the Real Housewives of Potomac's second part of the reunion. We know we ended at the last episode where we had the revelations from the binder that Monique shared that pretty much everybody's been talking about over the past week. And not just because of what Monique said, but because of the response that Pastor Jamal Bryant had for her. And we talked about it here. But anyway, what I wanted to talk about is Candace. Now here's the thing with me guys. I don't have a favorite. I don't pick sides. And I've said this before. I'm not for, you know, either person. I'm just on the side of right. What I perceive to be right. And in the situation with the fight, I have said it over and over again. Monique was wrong. But I also said, I understand somebody aggravating you to the point where you just want to put hands on them. That doesn't make you a bad person for wanting to put hands on somebody to shut them up if they're constantly annoying you or aggravating you. But it's when you do that, when they didn't put their hands on you, that it's wrong. Now, in this episode, they talked about the fight. Andy had to go there. And of course, Andy says, we on Bravo, we don't, con we of course don't condone violence. So I felt like that was the line that he had to say. Of course, they have to say that. They're not here to say, look, we love when people put hands on each other because we know it brings us more viewers. We know that it gets us ratings. So we want to give the ladies applause for throwing blows. Now let's talk about the fight. <laughs> no. So he had to say that, but of course it brought more viewers. It brought more people talking about it. It brings more exposure to the show, to the franchise. And of course, you know, to the Real Housewives of Potomac because Potomac's become pretty much the most popular Real Housewives franchise at this point in time. But he said some things that I agree with and some things that I said before. When Monique was trying to justify, I don't want to say she was trying to justify the fight, but when she was trying to explain herself as to why she put her hands on Candace, she tried to say, well, you know, the glass hit me in the corner of my, in the inside of my lip, and do you want to see my dental records? And of course, people are like, uh, no, that's too much. We don't need to see that. But Monique even had some revelations of her own because when she saw the footage when they were playing it back, they showed somebody's hand on her shoulder pushing her and she said out of her own mouth, oh, I, I thought that was Candace that pushed me. <laughs> and it wasn't. Candace's head was being banged down on the table as Monique was slapping her head down in the table several times and Candace had the glass of wine in her hand. So that glass got broken on the table as Monique was bashing her head into the table. Now, of course, Candace was trying to defend herself and she had the right to do so. I felt like Monique was a bit disingenuous because in the season or on the season in on one of the episodes when Monique and her husband Chris had their pastor and his wife come over to their house for a little bit of a mini counseling session it, it kind of confirmed my suspicions that that episode and that little meetup that little meeting that she had at her house with her pastor was really for Monique to show that she was trying to do the right thing more so than she actually was wrong in the situation. And when the pastor was talking to Monique, he told her that it sounds like you had some issues that were going on within yourself that had nothing to do with this person and you took it out on her because of what was going on at the time and that was like the perfect scenario for everything to just kind of explode and you exploded on this young lady and in that scene Monique started crying she's like oh my god I owe her an apology I felt like at the time that the meetup was disingenuous but I felt like because he called her on her shit excuse my language she was you know she was called to the carpet and she had to kind of admit that she was wrong in the situation but she never apologized to Candace. She never apologized to Candace for what she did. And I get it. If you if you feel justified, it's hard for you to apologize if you don't see yourself as, oh, I'm not a fake person, I'm real, I have to keep it real. 
but Monique never apologized. And I feel like in a way, some of the things that Andy was saying when he was calling attention to some of the things that happened, he was kind of letting her know, like, this is not new to you. You may just be seeing the playback of the fight, but your pastor even told you that you were wrong in the situation and that you owe Candace an apology because Andy was saying that you, he was like, what was the purpose of you meeting with the ladies? And Monique said, well, I really wanted to meet with them because first I was really happy that nobody was hurt in the situation. And it's like, uh, did you forget about Candace? Candace's head was banged up in the tape on the table. Her hair was a hot mess. And, um, even more so emotionally bruised. But she didn't even acknowledge Candace that Candace was hurt, that she hurt Candace. She just said, well, I wanted to meet with the ladies to apologize to them for putting them in that situation. But she never has said that she needed to apologize to Candace. And they have called out some of the Instagram posts and the tweets that she's done with regard to the fight. And Candace, even though the crying and we'll talk about that in a second. Candace has said, you know, I have had millions of people coming for me, and I don't know if it's millions of people, but she said, you know, I've had a lot of people coming for me as if I deserve this. And one of the reasons why is because of the way that Monique has put it out there. She made it seem like I threw a glass of wine in her face or I did something to her first physically that prompted Monique to lay hands on me and that's not what happened the and we and we've explained that the the wine being thrown in her face or whatever that was a reaction that Monique caused when when Monique was slapping Candace's head down into the table and Candace had this glass of wine in her hand and sh she couldn't see anything the natural reaction is to try to move your hands, flail your hands and, and those different things and it flew in her face. So that was just collateral damage. It could have flown in anybody's face. It just happened to be Monique's and to be honest, it was kind of deserved even though Candace could not see that that's actually where the wine was thrown. So that's just my thought on it guys. You can let me know your thoughts about it in the comment section. I don't wanna go back into narrating the fight but I'm really talking about it because Andy was really hard pressed to try to get Monique to just basically say, you know what, I'm sorry that it came to that. And Monique could not bring herself to do that. And although I am one of those people that agrees that I wish Candace would stop crying, I do understand, I do understand it. I'm not saying that somebody can't be tough and at the same time be soft. I do believe that her ego is more bruised and she is a bit more embarrassed more, more so than it's about the physical hurt that she experienced. And also, I do agree that if you are going to shed tears, if you are going to cry, you really need to do it in front of and around those people that really love you, that really care about you, or with your te your therapist or your counselor or whoever you're seeing if you're doing that. Because when, when Candace is making the comments, the shade is being thrown and the jabs are you know being done with her mouth when she's making the comments, whether they're slick comments or not, it doesn't give people that sympathy for her that they really should kind of have. I'm just being honest because it's it's kind of like people feel like, all right, if you can make slick comments, if you can talk slick, if you can make shady comments, if you can call her on this and call her on that, but then when it comes to the fight and you start crying about it and that happened uh, over a year ago, then what really is real? People question it. So again, I'm not saying that her tears are not genuine and they're not real. And I'm not even saying that the shade that she's throwing isn't genuine and isn't real. Because I do believe that if Monique could have just said, you know what, Candace, you pissed me off. You said some things and you did some things that pissed me off and it got under my skin and it was a build up. I shouldn't have put my hands on you and you waving your hands and, and all of those things. It, it triggered me and I just went off on you. I shouldn't have put my hands on you. I'm sorry. If she had just apologized and if Candace kept bringing it up and kept bringing it up, then honestly, 
more people would be saying, you know what, Candace, you are ridiculous. You need to let it go. Monique already apologized to you. But Monique has not apologized to Candace. And that's what Andy was trying to bring up. He was like, you had a meeting with all of these ladies that decided to show up. Of course, one left, Giselle. <laughs> and we know why. But you never apologized to Candace for what you did to her. And yeah, she's... You know, she went the legal route and it got dropped, but it doesn't mean that you don't owe her an apology for, for an apology for what you did. And in a way, I feel like Monique is justifying that she doesn't owe her an apology because the court dismissed the case. And I have stated this before from a legal assistant, having legal assistant experience, um, opinion, just because a case is dropped doesn't mean that it did not have complete merit. I believe that a lot of the issues and the factors involved with this being a reality show type of thing and whatnot, the court just decided they did not want to be involved in the situation, especially when it was something that didn't cause Candace grave harm and danger. Because I mean, if we think back to The Real Housewives of Atlanta, Kenya pressed charges against Portia for the drag that happened to her at the Real Housewives of Atlanta reunion many, many years ago. And Portia was arrested, but the charges were dropped as well. But they wouldn't have arrested her if there was not a cause to do so. So I'm sorry if I'm going off on a bit of a tangent, but I really wanted to talk about this because... I know that a lot of people feel like Candace just needs to get over it. She needs to stop crying. She needs to stop the tears. She isn't real. She's fake. She's phony. She's not hard. She's weak, whatever. I agree with some of those statements, but I don't, I'm not one of those people that feels like somebody just needs to get over something because unless you've gone through it yourself, you really don't know what somebody is going through. But it makes her seem disingenuous because she's doing both at the same time. So I feel like if she, in this situation, if she wants people to really understand her and have more people on her side, and that's Candace that is, then she needs to choose the lane that she's gonna be in. She's either gonna be in the lane of tough and hard and throwing the shade and making the slick comments, or you're gonna be in the lane of I am hurt, I was injured, my ego was bruised, I am emotionally scarred, I thought Monique was my friend, yeah we had some tit for tat and some issues and some misunderstandings but that was my girl and it, come, it came to this, like I am hurt by this and if she just continued to just be in that lane versus you know coming for people with her mouth and then crying when people are bringing up the, the fight situation it just makes it hard to be on her side so i feel like she should be able to cry but just do it if you're going to be hard on reality tv and and have this spot of you know whatever her tagline is about they say reading is fundamental and I own the library. You're, if you're gonna read people, then you really need to be able to stand in when people come at you and not shed tears. It, it just can't be that way. If you're gonna be able to read people, then you need to be able to be read as well. And it doesn't seem like she is able to really do that, especially when it comes to this fight situation. So I don't know. I don't know what will come in the next episode, but it feels like and it looks like it may be a bit explosive because it's supposed to be 90 minutes and some of the husbands are going to be there. But Chris made a comment about tearing up the whole set if some things are not cleared up or whatever. And now when Jamal says he's heard that Chris can be pretty mean and possibly a B U S I V E towards Monique, then that doesn't look good. And I'm not, I am not saying that that is something that ha that happens or has happened. I'm just saying that can be what Jamal was trying to insinuate based on that comment. And you know how people will try to use your words against you. And he didn't come to the reunion, so of course that was shared to him by Giselle or who, and you know, maybe other people. But I really do believe that Monique needs to take some accountability. I, again, am not on anybody's like team 
I'm not team Monique, I'm not team Candace, but it is really sad to see that at this point, Monique is still not taking any accountability. And I know that was her final word on the show. She's, you know, she said she's, she's not sorry for dragging somebody when they asked to be dragged that show that she really was still not sorry. And I had mentioned that before. So it, it's still sad to see that when Andy was trying to call her on it, I feel like in a way he was trying to look out for her. I really do. And I don't want to say look out for her because he sees her as a favorite, but I believe he knows that she's good for the show, good for the franchise and wants her to be able to come back. So I feel like he was opening the door for her to show some remorse to give people who make those decisions at Bravo to offer people another contract or make them a friend of the show or whatever, a, more of a reason to say, yeah, we have to see her back. She did go through a lot and there was some heavy accusations even if they weren't really aired on the show about her possibly being linked up with her physical trainer and you know they mentioned something about the baby that she had with her husband and insinuating that they were making rumors that the baby might not be her husband's and it could possibly be the trainers i do believe that a lot of the defect deflection with monique was really about those rumors and again we don't know if those things are true and there's been some things that have come out about the best friend or former best friend i should say that made some comments about that situation and so we don't we don't know the whole story but i do believe that you're going to be pissed off and angry if somebody's trying to break up your marriage even if there were issues and i do i do believe that there were some issues i'm not even gonna lie i do believe that there were some issues i'm not saying issues in terms of Monique cheating on her husband, but I do believe that her going through having three babies, feeling sometimes possibly unappreciated. She even said that on the show. She says, sometimes I, you know, I wish my husband actually acted like he cared about, you know, my day or, you know, something along the lines of that. And she did it in a laughing manner, but I do believe that she said it meaning that, but you know, tried to laugh it off as if it's not a big deal. And I do believe that behind closed doors, when the cameras are not rolling, that is an issue that she has because she clearly wants to be an entrepreneur, but her husband really wants her to be like a wife and a mom, barefoot pregnant and in the kitchen. He seems like that old fashioned type. So those are just my thoughts and my opinions. And again, Candace, shed the tears. But do it on your therapist's couch. Don't do it in the public eye because when you're throwing shade and you're making those comments, which, you you know, if you want to do that, you can do that. It doesn't make people feel sorry for you because they feel like the tears are not real. And I'm not one of those people to say that the tears are not real. I just feel like because of the lane, the, the road she chose to take with being on The Real Housewives of Potomac and saying... They say reading is fundamental, but I own the library. If you're gonna be the one that's reading people, then you can't be the one that's crying when you know somebody is doing something or saying something that you are, you know, not cool with. It just can't be both in this situation, and that's all I'm saying. But anyway, guys, the Real Housewives of Reunion Part Two, it was, it was not uneventful. There were other things that happened that I'm not going to really touch on on this reality chat, but I want to know what your thoughts are on this episode. Let me know if there's anything else that you saw that you want to discuss. Let me know in the comment section and let me know your thoughts on my opinion and what I shared. Feel free to agree or disagree. It's all good. But again, I appreciate you all liking, commenting, and subscribing. And until the next episode, I'm just being beautifully honest.